welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the fifth and final video in my note taking series and this video is on how to take notes for physics. So I've already done videos on how to take notes for economics, chemistry, maths and English and this is the final video in the series and as I've said about 10 times already, it's on how to take notes for physics, so let's get into it. So if you have watched any of my other videos, you will know that I am in love with the syllabus document. So the first thing I do when I create my notes for physics is I go to the syllabus. <coughs> I go to the syllabus document and I look at the dot points for the topic that I'm making notes on and I make my notes based around those dot points because those are the things that I need to know and those are the things that I'm going to be tested on. And then basically each syllabus point will be a subheading in my notes. So for example if we open up my notes we have here the notes on waves and one of the syllabus points was about diffraction so my subheading here is diffraction and then I write all my notes under that. So if the syllabus point is about diffraction I will then go to the, my class notes all of the notes that we've done in class we get given a booklet of notes for each topic and then I also have a separate exercise book that I write additional notes in and I will find all the information that I need to know about diffraction and I will just write it in dot points underneath that subheading and if there's any areas of that topic that I feel like the notes that we've done in class are lacking in then I will go to my handy textbook and find the information in there and the textbook that we had for physics this year was really helpful in filling those gaps and giving me definitions if I hadn't been given definitions in class of things or whatever I needed to know. So definitely go to your textbook if you feel like you're missing any information and if you still can't find the information that you're missing in your textbook then go and ask your teacher and they will give it to you. So this is pretty simple, pretty basic, just standard note taking form. You've got your subheading and then you've got all the information in dot points and I also try and include diagrams and tables where I can in physics because I find that that helps break up just the words and all the words and it helps information stick in your head better if it's represented to you in different ways. And then once I have written out all of the notes for that topic in that way I will go through and highlight. So I will highlight definitions in one colour, formulas in another colour, other information in another colour and if there's any other kind of groups of information for that topic because sometimes in physics there might be, I don't know, I will highlight that in yet another colour and then I also highlight the subheadings in another colour. So I have my five highlighting colours which are pink, orange, yellow, blue and green. So there are normally four or five different colours that I use to go through and highlight each set of physics notes. Um, and you can just see an example of that here. These are also my notes for waves. Um, yeah, I'm just highlighting the important information. I mean, I feel like you don't need to be given too much information on highlighting. Basically, you just go through and highlight the important information. But I feel like for physics, because there is so much information, it's a very content-heavy subject. Um, I do like to have a highlighting key and not just go through with one colour. I like to go through with a few different colours so I can kind of distinguish the information more easily and it's kind of just better to look at because you've got so many pages of notes that you want to be kind of mixing it up a bit so yeah. And so that's basically how I write my notes for physics but I do have one other thing I do to when making my notes so don't go yet. But yeah, just to recap that part before I go on to the next part, basically I just have my subheading and then all the information under that, making it a bit more eye-catching and interesting by using highlighters and by putting the information into tables and diagrams and flowcharts and anything else that I can think of to use. But it is basically just a standard note-taking format. And then for physics, because there is a lot of information, I find it absolutely crucial to make one page summaries at the end of every topic. Um, so let me just give you an example of what my one page summary might look like. Sometimes it is a mind map, sometimes it's 
not a mind map. Um, this is the one for heat. And you can see I really had to squish everything in there. But I think this is so important to do because it really forces you to focus on the important things and by condensing the information into one page, like you're not going to be able to remember 10 pages of notes. You're only going to be able to remember probably one page. So by condensing the information and just putting the important things on one page, that helps you to identify the important things and then you're able to study them and remember them. And it's also a lot easier when you're just glancing over your notes before a test to just glance over this one page because you only have one thing to look at. You don't need to be flicking through all of your notes. Um, so yeah, that's an example of a mind map that I've done as one of my one page summaries. But um, I do like to, for each of the different topics, I like to make the one page summaries look quite different and that helps the information for all of the different topics like stick in my brain and it helps me keep the information separate for each of the different topics so I can remember what each topic summary looked like and then in the exam at the end of the year I can like remember the information from each separate topic because they all looked kind of different so they all stick out to me for different reasons if that makes sense. Um, for one of my topics this was actually the very first topic of the year so maybe my note taking methods weren't quite up to scratch yet but um, it was on nuclear energy and I had so many pages of notes and I actually had to break my one page summary rule for the first time and put it into two pages, which I really, it's annoying. Like I think actually, I think later I then summarized it again into one page, but I would really, really urge you to try and stick to one page if you can try and not go over that because like I said, the point of it is to force yourself to really condense the information but I did have to put this one onto two pages so you, oh hello um so you can see here how it's kind of not in a mind map form it's in a different kind of form um just because I like to mix things up and depending on the topic um you know different topics will lend themselves more easily to different note taking forms so yeah just mix it up but I cannot stress the importance of mind maps enough for physics and for any content heavy subjects like oh one page summaries and mind maps just condense the information into one page it's just honestly it's a life changing <laughs> maybe not life changing but it's really helpful um yeah I feel like I've whizzed through this video quite quickly but that is basically how I take my notes for physics so I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope you've enjoyed this whole note taking series. Um, there are now five videos up on my channel on how to take notes for all of the different subjects that I take. So if you haven't had a chance to check them out yet, then definitely go check them out. I'll link some up here. I've probably been linking them throughout the video and then also in the description box or you can just go check them out by clicking on my channel icon down below. I am going to be making videos on how to study for each subject coming up very shortly so that is something to look out for because taking notes is one thing but actually studying is another thing there's many different steps to studying and note taking is only one of those steps so yeah those videos will be coming out shortly so don't forget to subscribe to my channel um, for more revision related videos just like those ones. I make lots of study and revision and school related videos so if you're interested in that sort of thing I would love it if you considered subscribing. <laughs> uh, I always feel so awkward saying that but yeah it just helps me out and it's really nice. Um, yeah we've actually hit 300 subscribers like quite a while ago but um, yeah, I just, I kind of forgot to mention it. So thank you so much for helping us to hit 300 subscribers. That means the absolute world to me. And yeah, it's cool that so many people, I can't believe it. So on that note, I hope you have a marvellous, oh, I never use that word, marvellous. Why did I say that? But, oh well, it works. I hope you have a marvellous rest of your day. And I will see you very soon. Bye.